Hello, my name is Sarah Smith. Today I want to share with you a story about optimism for nature in Cambridgeshire. I work for the National Trust as the General Manager for Wick and Fen, and I'm incredibly proud today to tell you about our exciting plan, which is called the Wick and Fen Vision. First of all, my story starts at Wick and Fen. This nature reserve is an incredible place. Nestled next to the village of Wiccan in Cambridgeshire, it's a nature reserve of incredible biodiversity. Over 9,000 species have been recorded on this special site. It's a national nature reserve, it's a site of special scientific interest, it's a special area of conservation and it's a Ramsar site. It was the National Trust's first nature reserves and it purchased the first two acres in 1899. So the National Trust has been looking after this wonderful place for over 120 years. Now Wickham Fen also tells a much wider story about the East Anglian Fens. The original Fenland Basin extended over three and a half thousand square kilometres of East Anglia. Drainage was started by the Romans, but momentum gathered in the 17th century under the supervision of a Dutch engineer called Cornelius Vermoyden. However, Wiccan Fen was saved by the villagers of Wiccan because they realised just how special and precious this place was. They saw off the king's messengers who attempted to claim the land for drainage in 1637. Later, in the 19th century, Wiccan Fen attracted wide interest and fame amongst Victorian entomologists. Many of these were based at the University of Cambridge, and some of them purchased areas of land of the undrained fen in order to secure it for the future. Many of them then later sold it and bequeathed it to the National Trust when it became the Nature Reserve in 1899. Unfortunately, less than 0.2% of original undrained fen remains in East Anglia. But this is not the story that I've come to tell you today. By the mid-1990s, the National Trust had been looking after Wick and Fen for nearly 100 years. The Fens had seen an enormous amount of change going on around them. Drainage had continued, agriculture had intensified in the local area, and despite the National Trust looking after it, it had actually lost species during that time. The Wick and Fen had become isolated as an island of biodiversity and it was one of only four remaining fragments of undrained Fenland. The local population was growing and more and more people needed green space and places to explore. More visitors meant more pressure on this precious fragment of undrained Fenland. The Trust identified that something needed to change. Looking after the Fen in its small isolated patch wasn't going to be enough to see through the next 100 years of this special place. So the Wick and Fen vision was born. In 1999, our vision was launched. It's a visionary 100 year plan to extend the nature reserve all the way to Cambridge. Starting back in 1999, at just over 300 hectares, it aspires to reach over 5,300 hectares. That's 53 square kilometres. It plans to be a landscape in which both people and nature can thrive. So how did we set out to do this? Well, we'd already identified that the nature reserve was, was too small, so the main aim was to make the nature reserve larger. We wanted to create a dynamic mosaic of habitats for both people and wildlife. We wanted more, but changing biodiversity. We wanted more diverse ecosystems. And we wanted increased access and engagement for local communities. We also recognised the impacts of climate change on the Fenland habitats. So we wanted to be able to increase the Fen's resilience to climate change in the future. We thought hard about how to do this and came up with a plan. First and foremost, we wanted to restore natural, natural 
ecosystem processes. We plan to do this by halting the drainage of the land and to allow vegetation to regenerate from seeds that were still in the soil from the past. But just letting the land go wasn't going to achieve what we needed to either. We needed to introduce some ecosystem dynamics, some disturbance, something to create those different habitats. So we introduced herds of large herbivores and they run in socially expressive breeding groups. Principally, we have conics, conic ponies and highland cattle. And at the moment, we have about 100 and head, 150 head of livestock that roam across wide areas of the Wick and Fen Vision area. So that was 22 years ago this spring that we launched the Wick and Fen Vision. What have we been up to since then and what have we achieved? Well, it's been an incredible time. We've so far created the buffer zone that we intended to, to the undrained peatland and the triple SI that we need to look after. In doing that, we've managed to more than double the size of the nature reserve to nearly 800 hectares. This has involved the creation of over 400 hectares of new habitat, much of it important priority habitat, rebed, open water, wet grassland. We've also welcomed more diverse and more abundant wildlife. We've been monitoring and collecting records across the whole of the area during those 22 years. And we've got records of up to 5,000 wildfowl using restored areas in the winter. We've also found species returning to the area, things like bitterns, common cranes, otters, lots of flagship fenland species, as well as some of the smaller characters like dung beetles and dragonfly species and some of our more charismatic birds like the short-eared owls that visit Burwell Fen over the winter months. But it's also been about people. There's been more access to nature for the people of Cambridgeshire. We've achieved this by creating 48 kilometres of new and improved access. That's footpaths, cycleways, bridleways, and in some cases access through waterways. There's a new national cycle network route that runs from Wick and Fens through to Anglesey Abbey with the extensions at either end that connect with Ely in the north and Cambridge in the south. We've established cycle hire, boat trips and a wild campsite. So there's many more ways for the people that come and visit the area and live within Cambridgeshire to explore this Fenland landscape. We've seen over a million people visit Wick and Fen in the first 20 years of the Wick and Fen vision. We've also done a lot in supporting and restarting some of the ecosystem services that had been lost or halted by the drainage of the land around Wick and Fen. We've managed to slow the degradation of peatland soils. The peat in the fens under intensive agriculture practices can lose between one and two centimetres of peat depth each year. We've managed to slow that within the areas that we look after. We've also reduced the amount of carbon that's been lost by this Prussian carbon peat soil stores that we have across the fens. In the areas that we've restored, carbon loss is 80% less than it was prior to restoration. We are incredibly proud of what we've achieved at the Wick and Fen Vision, but most importantly, it's a place for nature to thrive. And it's a place where people can come to connect with nature and have some peace and some quiet. And particularly over the last 12 months, we've seen just how incredibly important having places like Wick and Fen and the wider Wick and Fen Vision area are to allow people to connect with nature, to look after their well-being and get the, the well-earned fresh air and exercise that we all need. We can create a future where both people and nature thrive. At Wick and Fen, we've been doing it for over 120 years. And particularly in the last 20 years in the Wick and Fen vision, we've got made great strides to improving the Fenland landscape for wildlife. 
We've proved we can do it. We know we can do more. And we have the energy, passion and enthusiasm to go even further over the next 80 years of our Wiccan Fen vision. Thank you for listening today. Take care.